Well, good morning to everybody in the quad racer world. It's just a gorgeous day out here in the desert. It's a Monday. We had a long weekend. Got a couple vids we're going to shoot here today. And uh, one of them is, in fact, uh, just an awesome build. Uh, you know, I had a little technical input on, but really that's it. This is, in fact, my son's, uh, my son Chris's handiwork, 100%. From design to execution, all of it. This is the Rockstar Hybrid. Long story short, 91 LT 250R, uh, LT 500 motor in it. Uh, as you can see, the design elements and execution is gorgeous. This is a dune bike, V paddle tires. It's got a Metal Tech uh, four or four or five over swinger. I think it's a five over swinger on this one. And this is a, a you know a real live dune bike. We didn't even clean it for this video, but you know that's how we shoot things uh, at the Q Lab. It's not we don't shoot uh, two hours of footage and then edit it down to ten seconds of the best, showing us being cool or fast uh, like some of the others do. We just uh, shoot it raw, and it is what it is. I think people uh, like it that way and know that. What they see is uh, they can believe. Anyways, uh, just got a lot of cool stuff. Carbon fiber plastic. Really nice neon yellow cuts. Uh, you know, Mohawks. This bike is just bitching. Lowered pegs. You know, obviously it's got dad's pipe on it and stuff. But uh, just a real quick history on this bike. We actually, I picked this up as a project. Somebody from Texas had bought this thing, and then I've, this actually is one of the uh, the first uh, counterfeit or imitation Dr. Q motors right here. It's in this bike. I don't actually know what's even in the bike. And even though there are people that uh, think it was a hand-built rocket bike or motor, it's not true. I actually don't know what is in it. The reason it's here is because this this motor has performed poorly. It's okay, but I mean it's just slow, it vibrates, it just does not run. So, you know, we're going to pull the motor out of it and see what, exactly what's going on. Uh, you know, that's kind of how it is. They, they may call it better or like, you know, my work, but in fact it's not my work. And, uh, you know, the same goes with all the stuff that's of mine that I've originally done that gets imitated or you know they try to duplicate it it's just not the same as the original but you know we want to stick on a positive note this bike is just done beautiful I think it's just an awesome job you know that he did my son just really nailed it and you know this is not what he does for a living uh, uh, this is his own handiwork all of it it's got uh, even got the temp gauge on it and uh, just did an awesome job but it's that dad's to get the get the motor fixed you know it's got pl plus uh, two plus two a arms on it stretched the bike ran and handled and did all that stuff awesome through the dunes but the motors just a slug so we're gonna you know we're gonna rip it out see exactly what it is and uh, fix it Second reason why we're shooting a video today, had a few customers that have Zillas and I get questions about the frames and how to reinforce them, yada yada, all the time. So this particular chassis, this happens to be one of my spares, this is an 87 chassis. And there's a few subtle differences, mainly in the uh, area where the full floater cushion lever link goes. So we're going to talk about where to put the gussets on this because, uh, you know, stock chassis will crack. Uh, because essentially they don't have all the load points triangulated it's regular mild steel construction so we're going to try to give you guys some locations and and how to strengthen your frame so that it doesn't twist and crack and it's pretty straightforward it's it's uh, we're it's called spreading the load and when we put a gusset in it what it does is takes the load off the corner of the joint where two tubes intersect and spreads them out along 
in a diagonal or, or a triangulated plane to uh, keep them from bending. It's been used for years and years on pretty much everything and it's, a, it's an engineering staple. When you engineer something that's going to have load in it, one of the things you want to use is called triangulation. Like a good example of triangulation is this corner right here. That low point is triangulated. Unfortunately, it's not just loaded up and down. Also, the length of these tubes, there's quite a bit of distance. And because there's quite a bit of distance, there's quite a bit of load in the corners. So let's uh, let's get to it. I guess we'll start with the back. Yeah, we always have to be different. So we're going to put a gusset right in this area right here on both sides. Uh, you're going to put another one right down in here, right in the corner. Uh, and another one right in this corner here too. Uh, this area here doesn't really need to be gusseted because it's connected right. Oops, there we go. I don't even fall on the camera. You know, sorry, I don't do this for a living. But uh, at least the uh, the camera work. But this area is pretty strong here. Not going to be any problem, especially if you put a gusset right in this area. Uh, moving down to the bottom on the 87s, you're going to want to put a gusset in the corner right here on both sides. On the 88 to 90s, there's uh, some webbing right here that's already done from the factory. You don't need to do anything there. Also, right here, you put a little gusset in this corner right here. Another little gusset in this corner, in this corner. A little gusset in this corner right here. One right in here. I'm, you know, and when I do this on one side, I mean both sides. Right in here, right in here. And then also, it's really important because the front end gets a twist moment on it is to uh, 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 get both sides of this gusseted and then put a little gusset plate down in here, right here. And these are, this front area right here that I'm showing you is super critical to gusset in every direction, right in there. Because this is where the load from the front suspension meets up into the frame and you have your load from your rider, your front suspension, if they're going in a different plane, whammo, you get a twisting moment. So again, down in here, uh, uh, in the corners, all this area on all three planes, on this right here. Uh, the top end of these things is pretty good. There's really no need for gussets there. Uh, that's all good. Uh, and that pretty much will do it. You can also put one right in here, there's really not that much load on the upper arms. All the load path comes through the spindle uh, from the tire, wheel hub, spindle, lower ball joint, A-arm, and then it's transmitted up to the shock mount. But the factory bracing up here is excellent. Uh, so that's basically it. Even though it's an 87 frame, the front of it's just identical pretty much other than the steering stops to an 88 to 90. But that's basically it. Um, just wanted to take a moment, shoot this vid. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of Sonny. He just did a hell of a job on this bike. I'm real partial to the 250-500 hybrids. I had one for years and years called Pammy. Anyways, hope you folks enjoy the video. We will talk to you soon. Bye.